loves you, Joe. You walking in your barefoot with pink mascara. You know your couple when you start to dance, that's what we love. Next your dressing gown is about to fall down. down. Girl, let me thank you. Let me thank you for all of you. Girl, you know what you're doing to me. Girl, let me. Hello, guys. Welcome to Boxing Block Center, the home of Nigerian football boxing. Please, if you're new to this channel, make sure you click the like and, of course, the sub scrubber right now. Let's just go straight to it without hesitation. Let's talk about Saudi Arabia. Arabia Saudita. Bro, they've changed boxing. They are changing boxing. They are changing sports. They've been involved in various sports golf, wrestling, um, football. I mean, what Americans might call soccer. Um, and they are dipping F1. They are dipping their pockets in many, many, uh, uh, sport but I'm very happy for a sport for a, a sport fan and a an art core boxing fan that we in boxing now get we are now getting the fight we would have never in fact we are seeing promoters that we never would have imagined so I mean we never could have imagined uh seen work together um be together and be very comfortable being next to each other. I'm talking about the likes of Eddie Hearn, of Matro Boxing, and Frank Warren of uh, Queensberry Promotions. That's like really, really impressive. I tell you right now, Riyad season has been nothing but a blast. I think the Joshua Ngannou fight that is set to take place March 8th uh, would be the closing uh event um of real season um before that next month we have testing fury versus um usik listen usik for the undisputed heavyweight champion bro last december we had a blast of an event joshua defeated onto wallen Wilder losing to Parker. Um, this monster Magdumenov or Mahmudov. Mahmudov getting destroyed by Ajit Kawayer. Jerry Pharmacist Miller uh, stopped by Danny and Dynamite Dubois. Bro, we had a lot of upsets and we had a lot of great fight. The biggest one being the the water loss to Joseph Park. What do you think of Saudi Arabia? Are they the savior of boxing? Now, Joe, I know that the British, the Americans are not happy, especially the establishment in like so called in, in Britain. You have the bitter, uh, you have bitter people like, uh, Simon Jordan, very bitter right Simon now. Simon Jordan and the rest <laughs> talk, talking down on, on Saudi every time. I just feel like the hypocrisy of the West sometimes is really, really... Um, is it's alarming, of, man. It's alarming. It's alarming. Like, the hypocrisy is just too much, bro. You cannot be the... Uh, listen, you might not like the Saudis. Hmm? Because at each time, if you think to always bring bring out desert and stuff like that, or you know that oh, that's what they got to offer, that the land is not. Oh my! It's just like, bro. Not everybody wants to live in a, in a, in, a, in a cold country like the UK or or other European countries. It's just that economic the econo economics is what make people adapt to certain environment. Because the UK is not much beauty, is not beautiful, it's not, it's not more beautiful than uh, uh, South Africa, for example. We are talking about pure nature, or even Kenya, mm. Mm. or even Somalia. Mm. If Somalia is a, if Somalia is a, is a well functioning country, that country has potential. Even mm. Nigeria, there are places in Nigeria, listen, like let's take uh, Cross River, for example. 
where like what about natural you Egypt. know Cairo beautiful place Egypt you know? of, of course uh Sudan we're talking about places Cape Verde Cabo Verde is it uh Morocco Mauritius Morocco, Morocco is a little bit different because Morocco is the heat is too much and of course the desert there but I'm talking about natural basically habitat you know natural hemisphere mm. you know the beauty of South Africa for example is crazy yeah. the beauty of yeah. Kenya is crazy the beauty of Uganda I'm talking about naturally huh? I'm not talking about like uh, all these industrialized play you know I mean? Europe is very you're not talking about te- you're not talking about technological beauty yeah. and all of that you're yeah. talking about no, nature about nature so mm. it's funny how Sam- Simon Jordan uh throw chase at Arabia and saying the whole all they've got to offer is just the desert you know <laughs> or oil like holy say but then I uh, say that they are building artificial buildings f- forgetting the fact that if Europe didn't industrialize itself I mean, there's not really beautiful about Europe, bro. Um, the weather um, is not the best. It sucks. And okay, you might say Spain and Italy are great. They have great weather, no doubt. But somehow the economy is not good. They are not doing good economy. <laughs> I don't know why, but someone asked me that they said, "Why are countries with the worst weathers?" doing them the best i'm like how do you what do you mean he said you look at uk for example a small tiny island but the money there is crazy one of the richest countries in the world one of the most advanced countries in the world is a look at netherlands a very small country but a, a, got a lot of money and stuff like that he said look at sweden look at the uh, denmark look at Norway look at Germany he was mentioning those countries I'm like why don't you mention Bosnia Herzegovina why don't you mention <laughs> Kosovo these are all in mm. Europe bro why are you not mentioning Serbia these are in Europe you know why because those people those areas are the Balkans and of course they're also seen as Eastern Europe even though some of them are in, in uh, Central for example Czech Republic is a Central European country and they are EU they are part of EU or something like that. but yeah yeah like it's not as as attractive living in the Western Europe the reason why the Western Europe has this uh, economically advanced and has all this money is because of their past colonial um traits okay yeah without yeah. colonialism for example UK wouldn't be what it is uh yeah. germany the same thing the germany of course let's not forget germany um uh is it netherlands the same thing is it uh france bro in fact france is over the france is even the world bro they've got those guys they literally suck their colonies dry but i'm not a political person i don't like politics but if you start to if you if i see that you have an agenda against because Samuel Jordan, I don't want to say anything bad about him or something, but he does seem like someone that is he's like a colonial master. Like he, he looks like somebody that would have been a a colonial ma- uh, a slave ma- I don't know, a slave master. Where, he's a bully like, though. He's yeah, a bully. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, he he, he looks like that. He talked like that because the way oh, he's he talk, a bully, he's a bully. He talked like he's a bully. He talked very condescending yeah, it's very condescending yeah I mean, he will talk you down he wouldn't he will call you for an interview sorry to, bro, to, to, bro, to bro, i don't know him, i don't know but, it, but I, when i look at that guy i think he has some sort of superiority complex he does that's why because each time he talks down on middle eastern nations i don't know why it was like even though you might not like their laws and rules yes but it's their law bro let them, let them be what they want to be bro they cannot be like they can they can, they can bro everybody's different you know it's just, i don't know man no not everybody has to be like westernized in a way you know of yeah. course saudi arabia is advancing 
United United Arab Emirates has advanced. Qatar has advanced, but I mean, I'm I'm talking about about the, about infrastructure. You understand? Of yeah, course, yeah, yeah, yeah. their culture is different, totally different. You either respect it or you don't. Of course, I understand the reason why he he, he says that because a lot of the Western um um a lot of the Western a lot of Westerners are very condescending and are not like they are very selective of what they are trying yeah. to you know so i don't know man it's just like a west like someone from the west would find it if you mention australia he would be eager to go there you know what i mean yeah. or new zealand yeah. because it's kind is there basically it's kind we shipped there to australia enslaved the natives um and it seems that i don't uh, not put it to slavery but i basically just be shooting them up and uh wiping them up with alcohol stuff like that wipe the population out then uh, almost like just up basically what they did uh, in south africa but well, because south africa is in africa um he's it is hard you might be able to do oppress the people there for a certain amount of time but they will they will always they will they will they will always get get their land back because it's in mm. africa if south africa was in another continent i think they would have been basically the blast would be barely like uh less than five uh, percent now bro <laughs> yeah look at look at gibraltar <laughs> right yeah, look at bro, gibraltar bro, 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 bro. listen i'm telling you right now bro I'm, I'm, bro i'm not i'm not lying just look at new zealand and australia for example bro look at mm. america yeah, i mean the us bro it's just interesting but what i'm saying is that i feel the hatred towards the middle east especially towards the uh, arab nations or uh, social arab nations i think it's it's not, it's, it's, not, it's 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 not it's, it's not just hatred bro if i can come in now so that we can try roundups i think that it is a th- when they see anything that is like a threat to them to their ecosystem to their power their supposed power it's almost like we have to start talking those people down i don't want to go into politics tonight but i'm just going to give you an example let's just look at libya if anybody understands what actually happened in libya then that explains everything you need to know you know that just explains all you need to know but um coming back to this subject um about saudi arabia for me i call saudi arabia the mecca i'm only going to talk about boxing right now okay the mecca the new mecca of boxing now before i say anything though my only concern is i just hope that saudi arabia is able to sustain this i truly don't 100 i'm not 100 sure if this is sustainable and the reason why i said i'm not sure if it's sustainable is because the of the amount of money that is being paid they are paying these guys a whole lot of money a lot of money and how long how long would they be able to pay these monies how long can they do this can they continue to pay this kind of monies every other month every three months every two months bro so is, but, funny, but what i was saying funny do you know how much they pay ronaldo i know i know but uh, you so, know how so, many so, ronaldos so, are they paying so, so what are you saying you know how much they're paying the mark for example bro when it comes to deep saudi arabia <laughs> bro money is like it's all limited bro Mm, mm. but maybe 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 like you said maybe what they're gonna do uh, which i think that's what they're actually gonna be i believe to saudi arabia anyway. might buy the, bo- uh, the governing bodies at some point might buy it buy the governing body bro. so we can get to see more mm. good fight and more I, good fights, i don't yeah. know i think they can do if they want to do it but golf mm. anyway for me right um i'm i'm happy i'm happy yes i live in the west i've been living in the west for a really long time but at the same time i'm not blind to see what is going on and i'm not blind to see the 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 the, the anger you know the jealousy that 
that um, the West, not all of them, obviously, I'm not just going to say, oh, everybody in the West, but talking about boxing now, um, even in the boxing community, um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing guys like Simon Jordan, and I'm seeing how how jealous, how jealous, since this guy failed as a businessman, he was the owner of, I think he was the chairman of Crystal Palace or something like that, he failed. Um, brought the club into administration and he has just failed in business and he also had a mobile phone company a while ago which did very very well but eventually failed you know or maybe sold it off or something like that no he actually sold it for a lot of money and then brought that money into sports i think it was crystal palace football club he bought at the time but eventually brought that club into administration um so that's what i think happened now and I just, it just really gets me angry. Why you think that everything has to be centered around the UK or America when it comes to boxing? What right do you think that you have a monopoly over the sports? I'm also wondering because even during the uh, Rum of the Jungle, for example, I just can mm. imagine how the, the media, the American media rubbish it. Early, I know um, Mubutu who, he was a detector for sure, but that fight is still be, being talked about to this day. Mm. Rumble in the jungle, mm. like it's an history made forever. It's one of those fights that end of the event and everything. Because for a fight as big as that to take place in Africa, I mean, it was unimaginable, bro. And yeah. I believe, like Ngannou, Joshua, for example, if it's if the rematch, if they have a rematch, and it take place in somewhere in Africa, bro, it will be huge, massive. Yeah. Go what I bro, think, sorry. yeah. What I sorry, just to touch on that, what I think that Joshua and Ngannou should do, um, before I go back to the old subject of Saudi Arabia being a mecca of boxing, I think that um, if the I, I don't believe in fixing, but if the fight for an example hands in a draw then the rematch will be very big and they can go to africa to do that but if joshua beats ngano again um so he's going to be he stepped up twice again two boxers and then the two boxers on record beating so that fight won't be a rematch or even ngano against any other fight uh, any other boxer would not be as big as i think if Ngano loses against Joshua, I think what he should do is go and fight some lower tier boxers to get some wins on his record. Because at that point, remember, he's not combat sports champion anymore. At the moment, he's not UFC champion. He's not, he's not a champion in any sport at the minute. Okay? And he has come with his huge name, huge reputation coming from the UFC into boxing. The first fight, he did pretty well. He got beat. If he comes in the second fight, regardless of how he gets big, even if Joshua outpoints him, it's always going to be, you stepped up twice, you lost against, you know, two heavyweights, you know, um, you know, two popular guys in the heavyweight division and you lost twice. So that name, that, that, uh, uh, popularity and 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 all of that is automatically going to go down automatically automatically will go down so um I, unless this one hands in a draw and if it's well if it's a really really good fight like say i'm going to get knocked down twice joshua gets knocked down once the both, both of them went in and they gave it a good fight and then the referee rules it a draw or a split decision but say i'm going to drop joshua two times and joshua drops him three times and everybody's going to be talking about it and be like wow 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 then we can have a rematch but if joshua goes in there and it's a one-sided point win or Joshua knocks him out, uh, bro, forget that, forget it. There will be no big fight anymore, to be honest. There will be no big, that will be it. That will be it for Ngano and big fight for now. And remember the guy is 37 going 38 years old. So he's going to need to go and fight the likes of maybe Derek Chizora, go and fight the likes of Manuel Cha, guys that were sure or hopefully he can beat, you know? So anyway, um, talking about Saudi Arabia, I am glad it is not even about Saudi Arabia. It is just about the fact that I want a division of power. 
when it comes to everything in life. And right now we are talking about boxing. For too long, the UK and the US has almost monopolized boxing um, and how popular and how powerful so the, the main powerhouses, right? The main boxing powerhouses are based in the UK and in, in, in America. And I'm glad that we have a new powerhouse. And this new powerhouse now is even more powerful. At the moment, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but at the moment, more powerful in terms of financial pool, more powerful than the UK and, and America. So much more that these guys, Saudi Arabians, they brought two promoters who do not like each other at all. Eddie Aaron, Frank Warren, they don't see eye to eye. These guys have been promoting for such a long time and they have not met face to face. The first time they met face to face, <laughs> it was Saudi Arabia that brought the both of them together. And the both of them have been living in the UK all their lives. All of their lives. At the end, dad was a boxing promoter as well. And at the end, has never met Frank Warren. Never. So the first time they actually set you know, eyes on each other was because Saudi Arabia brought them together. That is power play, bro. Power play. And I'm glad that a different country, a different region is able to do that. And now, for all these Americans and all these British guys, um, all the Simon Jordans and all the, some part of the LDBC, the Alphabet Boys in the U.S., all these trying to talk down Saudi Arabia and blah, blah, blah. Shame on you guys, man. Shame on all of you. You need to realize that the world don't revolve around the U.S. and the U.K. The world is a large country. I mean, it's, 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 it's a large place, man, with different continents. So I'm so glad that we have a new powerhouse. I'm so glad that there is a division of power, distribution of power. Enough is enough for one country or two countries to just monopolize everything and they never made fights happen. Look at how long we have been talking about Joshua Wilder, Joshua Wilder, Joshua Wilder. For years, we got tired of it. Now, look at how long we've been talking about Better Biev and... Um, um, Brother Dave and what is the other guy's name, you know, the other champion. The both of them, we've been talking about the both of them for too long, but now they have a deal in place. If Brother Dave is able to beat Callum Smith, we're going to get undisputed, 175 champion, undisputed champion. Now, because of Saudi Arabia, we're going to get undisputed everywhere championship. Now, because of Saudi Arabia, we're getting guys who would normally not fight each other. We would normally have politics. We would normally look at, if not for the fact that Wada fumbled the bag, they already had a deal in place, signed, sealed, delivered. The only thing they needed to do, the both of them, Joshua, go in there, beat Wallen, Wada go in there, beat Joseph Parker, and they were going to, because I watched um, Chris, Chris, I think, what's his name again, Chris? Is it Chris? Marlins or whatever, that guy, the, 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 um, the ring announcer. And he was saying that the plan, you know, in his, in his podcast, that what they planned was that after Joshua fight, hopefully Joshua's knocked out Wallin, um, they, they were going to invite, invite Wilder to the, into the ring. The both of them, they were going to have a face-off. The fight will be announced right there for March. But unfortunately, we didn't get it. But what I'm trying to say, however, is that at least they brought the both of them to that point. At least they brought Usyk and the Fraud Fury together to this point. At least they are bringing Better BF and um, I just keep forgetting that guy's name. They are bringing the both of them together if Better BF is able to defeat Callum Smith. So these guys are doing wonderful things, man. These guys are the new, at the moment, I don't know what's going to happen in the next month, but right now, they are the mecca of boxing. They make whatever fights they want. They make it happen. They make it happen. They brought, you see, 12 promoters together to, 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 to be able to, to, to give us day of reckoning. And how much are we even paying for pay-per-view? 20 pounds, 20 euro in America, $50. Whereas... We would have paid in America, they would have paid like $80. 
In the UK, they would have paid about 29 pounds. In Ireland, we would have paid about 30 euros, 25 euros. So they are the new giants. I just hope that they, they are able to sustain this. I hope that this rain goes on for a long time and Simon Jordan and the rest of them, this Simon Jordan just has hatred for anything that is progressive. It's like he doesn't want to see anything that is outside. He, the guy is just like, even when he invites people for his interview, he's so condescending. You wouldn't even allow them to talk. You invite someone to, 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 on your show, to your show, he just thinks speaking big grammar is, is a sign of superiority. You'll be blowing unnecessary big grammar. You think speaking English is a sign of superiority? English is just a freaking language out of thousands of languages around the world. Thousands. English, yes, is a very popular language, but it's just a language. And this guy will come there and just be trying to use big grammars to, to, to bully people and to make people feel like, oh, they, 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 they probably need to listen to him. And they'll be talking people that you invite them to an interview, but you won't give them a chance to talk. And then every opportunity he gets, he tries to talk down at so I remember the last interview I was watching when Frank Warren put him in his place. He was telling Frank Warren that, oh, but the atmosphere was very dull. It was like there was nobody there. The atmosphere was dry. And Frank Warren was like, are you there to see the atmosphere or you're there to see the fight? Frank Warren put him in his place. Almost, Frank Warren didn't tell him to shut up, but the way he talked, he was like, shut up. Shut up. You're talking about the atmosphere. Boxing in Saudi Arabia is a new sport. What do you expect? They are not used to boxing yet. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to introduce boxing to them. We're trying to take boxing to other regions around the world to grow the sport and to make it bigger. Do you think we must always fight, go to Wembley and go to Tottenham and go to the O2? You think that's the only place boxing must happen? Or go to Vegas? Or go to Barclays Center? You think that's, these are the only places that boxing must happen? No. We're taking boxing around the world now. We're taking it to Asia. We're taking it to Africa. Do you know that the Solon brothers, yeah? The Solon brothers now, they have got something going on in Nigeria. They have their scouts in Nigeria. I was watching one of the interviews when Kali Solon was saying that they have something going on in Nigeria. They've got some guys on ground in Nigeria looking for talent. Boxing is going around the world, bro around the world and i'm glad about it yes bro me too and, bro and you all all the simon jordans and all these guys you need to get off your high horse man and allow boxing to flourish let boxing flourish if you can't deal with it get out of the sports stop covering it if you can't deal with the fact that saudi arabia now they're going to be big players in the sports don't then cover it anymore get out of it if you can't deal with the fact that we're going to have a lot of Africans now succeeding internationally, then then forget about it. Stop covering the I sports. I mean, I'm not. Listen, Saudi Arabia is a country that I'm not familiar with, but I'm do I'm familiar with their culture. You know, you know, but it's not my it's not it's not my thing to judge any country or any culture. You know what I mean? But it's just like. The double standards that I see is just weird. Like America, for example, is I mean, people die when America and they die in Saudi Arabia, right? You can easily be in the school in school and someone just come and shoot you up, shoot the school school up without doing nothing to the person, or to the cinema and even the street. Everybody has guns, bro. A lot of things happen in that country, but yet. I'm just imagining if, like, for example, look at countries that are, that don't have the PR game or don't have the support from the West, like America does, mm. for example. Now, Europe would never dare speak against America's uh, uh, gun crime. They would never do that. That's fact. Because these yeah. are people that work together, okay? Yeah. But they'll be able to they'll quickly do that against... Um, maybe when it comes to Mexico, for example, they can do that easily. Do that, or Caragua, Bro, do you, Ecuador, those do you know? Do you know that statistically, more people die in the U.S. than in Saudi Arabia every year? Do you know that? Yeah, go and check it. So, what are we talking about? Uh, so you also safer. You also safer in, in in Saudi Arabia than you are in the U.S. 
The only difference is that in the US, of course, the freedom to express yourself and do other things. And, you know, it's, of course, there's more in the US, you know, but it all depends on what you want. Like, are you really. I'm not condoning. I'm not condoning. If there has been any wrongs being done in Saudi Arabia, I don't live there. I don't know. They are, I really don't. I know it's an Islamic nation. They have their way of life. And you cannot impose your way of life on people. The West cannot impose their way of life on people. The way people respect the West's way of life, there is a lot of things that happen around me, living in the West, that I don't agree with, that I'll be like, what's this? But I don't have to accuse anyone. I don't have to, for an example, I don't want to say, but you know what I'm saying. There are certain things yeah. like in relationship or marriage, for example, you know, there are things to see here that our culture don't condone but it is their way of life and you have to respect it we respect their way of life so why does do they think it is okay for them to now try to control africa control asia control everywhere this is not 1855 man this is 2024 bro all right people have the right to their way of life yeah man. the saudi arabian people if that is a way of life leave them to it yeah if there is human rights abuses because that's what it is they're always talking about well look for a diplomatic way and they are correcting all of that anyway saudi arabia is working on all that now women can drive now women can travel by themselves i think women can vote as well all of these things never used to happen in that region the country is beginning to open up a lot yeah, of things but, are beginning but, to open but, up but, but they shouldn't open up too much bro let's just they open up some and just leave the rest because uh, that's a holy land if you look at it they have, they have I know. two holy cities there Mecca yeah. Medina Mecca you know? yeah 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 you know, so even there. Jeddah as well it's a, it's a holy place so well, yeah so that's a holy land to, to, to the Muslims so of course things like that things like that should have been in, in place already though in my opinion but they shouldn't uh, you know, open up too much. They're still trying because even things like alcohol and all that, they don't allow those things. You get? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So they're definitely. still trying their best, but they want to open the place up so that people don't, so that people can understand that they are human I too mean, and example, they are welcoming people. For example, UAE, for example, has those laws, and UAE is still one of the most visited um, countries uh, in the world. You know, like uh, Dubai is very, the city of Dubai is very popular. For example, like, exactly. It's a popular destination. So guys, exactly. so your final conclusion about sorry, a good, uh, a good for boxing or bad for boxing? Absolutely good for boxing. Come on, if <laughs> if Saudi is not good for boxing, then we wouldn't be seeing on this future that one. We wouldn't be seeing Usyk, Fury, Joshua, Wilder, all these guys. Of course, it's good for boxing. Even if they host two or three good events every year, every other fighter will be they will all get busy in their various countries because they'll be like, well, we don't know when we're going to get our Saudi call. We don't know when, we don't know when we're going to get our Saudi call, so let's keep acting. Let's keep winning. Because the reason why a lot of these fighters got the call was because they kept fighting, they kept winning. They got the call. So it's a good thing. It's going to keep people on their, people are going to be on their toes now, trying to win, trying to do better because they're going to be like, well, I have to keep trying because Saudi call may come in at any point in time. And when they want to make fights happen, they make fights happen very, very quickly. They don't waste time. Negotiation is done within a week. No long thing, bro. Like the band you say. No long thing. No long story. Do you want it? This is the money we're offering you. 30 million, 20 million, 10 million. Look at how much they paid Dubois and, and, and big, big uh, hijacking Miller. Look how much they paid those guys. Where else will they get that kind of money? Three million. Where? Nowhere. Nowhere. The world fought for three bets. He couldn't even get up to that. And when he fought me, like, he didn't even fight for a single belt. And he got way more than he got for fighting music. Way more. So, bro, they are great for boxing, in my opinion. I think that he's going to keep boxers on their toes. They're going to want to do well. They're going to want to do better. They're going to want to always fight and keep winning so that when they get that call, they'll be ready. They'll be ready, bro. So it's good for boxing, man. Really, really good. And in fact, in fact, 
because of what I've seen so far, I'm really, really planning. I was telling the missus the other day that I may, I may, I will love to go to Saudi Arabia. Let me even see what that place is about, man. I may go to Saudi Arabia this year, but I'm sure if I don't go this year, next year at some point I'm going to be there, bro. If there's a big boxing card going on, I'm going to, I'm going to go, bro. I'm going to go. Yeah, bro. I think it would be nice, you know. Oh, bro, it would be nice, man. I'm going to go. If I don't go this year, but if there's a big boxing card next year, bro, definitely I'll be inside the area, by the grace of God. So it would be really good. So they're good for boxing, and they're showing us that they are not as bad as they've been portrayed to be, you know? They're showing us now that, listen, we have had our issues and all of that, but we are not as bad as we have been portrayed. So they're really showing us the other side. I'm not saying everything is perfect, but things are not perfect here in, in Ireland. Things are not perfect in the UK. Things are not perfect in Amsterdam, in Holland. No things are not perfect in Germany. No perfect, you know? No way it's perfect, bro. No way it's perfect. So, yeah, bro, they're good, yeah. they're good for boxing. I think I, yeah. Yeah, true. I look forward to it, man. I mean, at least we get to see this fight. So... Because so, the truth, if not for them, we're not. We wouldn't have. We won't be even talking about undisputed at all. Nah, Trust me, uh, we won't. Undisputed will be dead, bro. Exactly. But now look at it. We're talking about it. Look at the number of topics we've talked about today. Look at the long conversations we have, we've had. It's because Saudi Arabia made it happen. Now we're talking about Ngano Joshua. It's because of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, man. Big up to Saudi Arabia. Big up to Saudi, Big up to Saudi Arabia, man. So, guys, you heard it from my brother, Mao Joe. Make sure to like the video and subscribe. I appreciate each and every one of you. What's your take on this? Do you think Saudi Arabia is good for boxing? Or do you think um, uh, Vegas, you know, uh, the UK, you know, like uh, Wembley Stadium, O2 is better. Uh, you know, I know people have things to say about the atmosphere, but it's basically a young nation in sports. Yeah. I'm, I mean, combat yeah. sports, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's combat sports. So I think uh, it's a young nation combat sports. So we need to give them time. Because in, bo in, uh, in, in, in football, we know Saudi Arabia, uh, the young Saudis are crazy about football. So combat mm. sport is one of those things, you know, they are embracing and they do love it. So we, would, we want to see more, more, more cars in Saudi. So God bless Arabia. God bless Saudi Arabia. Cheers.